What's up guys? Today we're going to do a bit of a deep dive on frame rates. I'll break down what a frame rate actually is, how it affects your video, and how to choose the right one next time you're out shooting. Frame rate is the number of individual frames or images that your camera captures per second. That's why it's called frames per second or FPS. For example, a frame rate of 24 FPS contains 24 individual still images within one second. That's pretty self-explanatory when the name is frames per second, right? Because when you're watching video, you're not actually watching something that is moving. What we're seeing is a series of still images shown one after the other, and when these images are played fast enough, our brains blend them into one continuous movement. Kind of like these flip books, where if you flip through the pages fast enough, it looks like it's moving. Now, I don't know about you, but I spent way too long making these in the corner of my dictionary during English class. Now, depending on which part of the world you live in will depend on the standard of frame rates you will use. The two most common standards are PAL, which shoot at 25 and 50 frames per second, or NTSC, which shoots at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second, with the 24 and 30 rounded up from 23.976 and 29.97 for legacy reasons, which we're not gonna get into in this video. And for the sake of the rest of this video, I'll be talking in NTSC terms. So for everyone in a power region, just know when I say 24 or 60 FPS, that would just be 25 or 50 for you. So what are some common frame rates? 24 FPS is the gold standard for movies and narrative films, as the motion has a slight blur, and this is what gives it that cinematic look. I like to use this frame rate for real-time moments that make the viewer feel like they're actually there. 30 FPS, this is a common frame rate for TV broadcasts, soap operas, and sport, and it's what your smartphone shoots at by default. It feels a bit smoother and a bit more crisp than 24 FPS. 60 frames per second is the most common frame rate for shooting slow motion, perfect for slow action human movements or general B-roll that you want to slow down and post, and it makes things just look a bit more smooth and cinematic. 120 frames per second or 100 for you power users is a great frame rate for things like really fast human movements or elements. Things like waves crashing on a beach, fire, rain, smoke. What this frame rate does is it takes away a lot of that motion blur and we get to see things in a way that we would never usually get to just with our normal eye. When you start shooting higher than that, things like the Phantom camera can shoot a thousand frames to really, really slow down time. Then you have to be getting quite intentional with your slow motion usage as things can sometimes drag on too much in your edit because the footage is just too slow. Looks cool, but just too slow. So this footage shot at 24 FPS, then I bring it into the computer and edit it as a 24 FPS sequence before exporting it as a 24 FPS video file. So you'll notice that the whole production workflow is the same frame rate. Now with that being said, this doesn't mean that you can't have multiple frame rates within your editing project. You have your camera's frame rate and you have your editing project frame rate. These two are completely separate independent things. However, you can't have portions or segments of your exported video at different frame rates. This has to be one universal frame rate for that video export. So this leads into one common mistake when dealing with multiple frame rates, and that is not interpreting your footage to your timeline frame rate when editing. So when you import a clip at a different frame rate, come to the clip attributes and interpret that footage to match your timeline frame rate. Once conformed, that clip will automatically be slowed down and stretched in length in your timeline. Let's say I shot some 30 frames per second drone footage and did not conform it to my timeline frame rate. If I drag that into my 24 FPS timeline, you'll notice that it's a bit jittery, which is not good. What's happening here is that for every second of this 30 frames per second footage, six of those frames are taken out to match my 24 frames per second timeline. And we see that choppiness where those frames are missing. Now, if I interpret that footage first and drag it onto the timeline, you will see that it has been slowed down slightly as playback is still only getting through 24 frames a second, but none of the frames have been dropped, keeping it smooth. Here are three main questions you should ask yourself when choosing a frame rate for your shot. First question is, are you recording sound or dialogue? 
When you're filming something with spoken dialogue, like an interview, or just want to capture the audio soundscape along with your footage, then you should always shoot in the same frame rate as your editing timeline, which in most cases will always be 24 or 25 FPS for power regions. This is because if you try and conform your 30 or 60 FPS footage you shot with audio to your 24 frames per second timeline, then your audio will go out of sync. Natural frame rates, aka 24 and 25, also work best with real-time sound effects, whereas slow motion can sometimes feel disconnected and requires special sound design to bring your viewer in. Second question is, are you going to slow it down? If the answer to this is no, then great, 24 FPS is more than likely your frame rate. If the answer to this is yes, then you need to be sure that that is what you end up doing with that footage, as not slowing down a shot taken in a higher frame rate quickly takes away from that smooth cinematic feeling and can come across as looking unnatural and digital. And the third question is, and this is an important one, what do I want the viewer to feel? The best frame rate to portray the real speed of your subject is 24 and 25 FPS. It gives the viewer a real-time feeling of events as they occur and makes them feel like they're right there with you. Let's take the scare for example. Here we have it playing in real time and we can see and feel the speed. We understand the skill and the ability of this person, something that we would not get the same feeling from with slow motion. So make sure you're intentional with your frame rate selection. There you have it guys, I hope this has given you a better understanding on frame rates. I know it's a lot to take in, but it's a crucial thing to understand how frame rates affect your image, when to use them, and how to bring them in properly when editing. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below, and if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.